The simplest example of a simple harmonic oscillator is a mass on a spring that's attached to a wall. No friction, nobody's shoving it regularly, and it has what we call a linear restoring force. Restoring because if you move it left, the force pushes right. If you move it right, the force pushes left. There's an equilibrium position. If you set the equilibrium position to zero, x and delta x are the same thing. So using f equals ma, we plug in minus kx equals ma. And rearranging it, we get zero is acceleration plus k over m times position. But acceleration is the double derivative, the double time derivative of position. So this is what we call a differential equation. What is the solution to the differential equation? Well, just like an algebra equation is sort of a riddle, guess the number, a differential equation is kind of a riddle, guess the function. Essentially, we're looking for something that when you take two derivatives, it's negative proportional to the original thing. Two functions that have that property are sine and cosine, because the derivative of sine omega t is omega cosine omega t, and the derivative of that is minus omega squared sine omega t. Meanwhile, derivative of cosine is negative omega sine omega t, and the double derivative is minus omega squared cosine omega t. It's negative proportional to what it was before. And this will work so long as omega squared is k over m. Now, this is what we call a linear differential equation. So if you add two solutions, you get a solution. And if you multiply a solution by a constant, you get a solution. So the general solution for x as a function of time would be some constant times the sine omega t plus some other constant times the cosine of omega t. And using trigonometry, it turns out you can make this some overall amplitude sine of omega t plus or minus phi, depending how you define phi. So the behavior is always sinusoidal. If we essentially choose the situation so that phi is zero, we've basically cut the problem in half. Now that we have that, how does that relate to the unit circle? If you had a wheel spinning with angular frequency omega, and at the same time you had a mass going from here to here, with that as the equilibrium position, then a point on the wheel and the mass would get over here at the same time because it's simply the same math. Your position on the unit circle, if we're using an amplitude c, so if we start the clock when the mass is over here and allow it to oscillate back and forth across this diameter, if you spun the wheel at the same speed, the point on the wheel would get to the other side at the same time as the mass. Fun fact, if you were to drill a hole through the earth and drop an object, it would fall through the earth and come out the other side and probably just come up, hover, and then fall back through again, in theory. It turns out that if you drill a hole into a planet, the force of gravity is zero at the center, because everything's pulling in opposite directions, so there's no gravity in the very center of the Earth. A lot of pressure, but no gravity. And the force of gravity actually goes up linearly with distance, as long as you're inside the Earth. Which means gravity is actually a linear restoring force. So it has the weird effect that if you had an object orbiting the Earth and you dropped an object so that it fell through a hole in the Earth, they would reach the other side at the same time.